So we are going to start a new sutta since uh, we spend some time in discussing uh, previously on the Uraga Sutta which discuss on the different aspects of uh, letting go process and uh, I selected another sutta available in the Sutta Nipata that is called Kasi Bharat Dvaja Sutta. Now Kasi Bharat Dvaja Sutta is actually a very interesting one again because uh, where Buddha recognize one farmer actually he is a Brahmin and he engaged with farming and he is actually a wealthy person by the way I mean he is, has a lot of uh, cows lot of uh, other workers working under him so and one day Buddha understood uh, this person has fairly matured faculties now and I better go and meet him I better uh, preach him Dhamma and if 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 after hearing Dhamma, he may become a monk and ultimately he become an Arahant. So having understood that, now Buddha approached the paddy field. At that time, before the beginning of the plowing, actually he is conducting kind of a uh, distribution of food. So now Buddha also approached there where the Kasi Bharat Baja is distributing food maybe to his workers and supporters because fair amount of people are engaged with this activity it's not a, just a single field but many fields where he is a rich person and now Buddha approach that particular occasion and after seeing Buddha now this uh, Brahmin he is making a very interesting statement so he is mentioning uh, I plow and I sow ascetic and having plowed and sown I eat now basically this is something someone who is uh, working hard so he is not ready to give away what he is earning because what he earns is through his uh, lot of effort he is working hard and this is uh, very similar to today, suppose that uh, you or someone else is a hard worker, you have to spend fair amount of time at your office or maybe you are working hard at any other business or any other activity and uh, by working hard you are earning some righteous kind of a salary remuneration and with that you are protecting your children, your husband, wife your relations and that is how you are in a way maintaining your life and when someone is simply coming and asking for uh, just giving away simply asking some money simply asking some food simply asking something so then you might not feel giving it because you know how difficult it is to earn so you are spending a lot of time you are maybe conducting over time and sometimes working hard even at your home so it is quite difficult and a lot of hardships are there and while at office you may have to go through a lot of stressful situations ultimately that is how you are paid kind of a remuneration so simply giving it away or simply sharing that with another person may be a little difficult so the same thing is here. So now Buddha approach as an ascetic, expecting some food from this uh, Kasi Bharat Daja. So it seems like Kasi Bharat Daja is not that used to uh, donate. And so he little resist. He simply said to the Buddha, now I am eating after plowing. I am eating, uh, sowing and then plowing. I am eating. Now you also better do the same thing. I am not ready to share things with you because you too as a tick must plow and sow and having plowed and sown you can eat. So interesting answer. Now Buddha ironically mentioned the same thing. I am also plowing, I am also sowing and having plowed and sown I am eating. Now interesting because this predictor Brahmin, he know very well that uh, Buddha is not a farmer. 
but he know that buddha is a maybe we can call it him as a teacher well known teacher and he is not using plowers i mean the plow he doesn't own any fields he's not a farmer so he very well know about it so he therefore next he's little puzzled he's little surprised by hearing the buddha's words because now buddha is very much like lying now he is uh, telling again asking but we do not see master gotama's yoke or plow or plowshare or god or oxen yet master gotama says this i too brahmin plow and so and having plowed and so night now now he is a farmer so he know what are the instruments being used in farming so buddha even though he say that i am also plowing sowing and after plowing and sowing i am eating so there is no any farming equipment available with buddha so now he is questioning i can't see your yoke you can't see your plow you can't see your plow share and even the oxen so then how are you telling like that now interesting the buddha give a kind of a simile and again kind of a uh, analysis and why he is mentioning like this so metaphorically why buddha is mentioning that he is also plowing he is also sowing he is also farming and as a result of that he is also eating now he is talking in the spiritual terms what is his kind of farming kasako pati janasi na cha passama te kasin kasin no puccito bruhi yatha jane mu te kasin now this is the question asked by kasi bharadwaja so you are telling that he is addressing to the buddha you are claim, telling that you are a plowman you are a farmer but we can't see you are plowing and uh, tell us about your plowing so that we can understand your plowing now through a verse he is asking the question now buddha giving a very interesting answer so this is something that we can understand we can uh, play some pay some attention saddha bija tapo utti panya me yuga nangala hiri isa mano yottam sati me phala pachana now saddha is the bija saddha is or the faith is the seed tapo utti austerity the rain panya me yuga nangala wisdom is my yoke and plow now the wisdom Now here actually we can say seed of faith now we have some faith on dhamma we have some faith on buddha the sangha so we have to plant that then only it will produce some result as a plant as a tree as a uh, harvest so just having faith may not be enough so faith has to be developed faith has to be cultivated so faith is the seed tapo vutti now faith alone is not enough you can't have simply seeds you need rain at proper time so that means when you are plowing you have to have proper time the rain water so that indicates you need to have seed tapo austerity basically we can consider as the sealer where you are maintaining kind of a wholesome virtuous morality within yourself now we have faith and now we are trying to cultivate that and in the surrounding we have the austerity or what we can say as the adherence to sealer precepts and now time to time we are taking care of that so we are maintaining seal and time to time we may reflect back whether we are maintaining it properly are there any uh, sort of lapses in protecting seal and panya me yuga nangala wisdom is my yoke and plow now panya wisdom is in a way 
time to time we can get through different means one way is to listen to Buddha's teaching another is our own reflection third one is our own investigation now the last one is actually the meditative type of in, uh, wisdom that is what we are primarily concerned so how one may develop such panya how one may develop such wisdom Kiri isa mano yottam. Now, moral shame is the pole. Mind the yoke strap. Moral shame. Now again it is closer to the uh, morality. Because moral shame and moral dread is something that uh, one may develop as a result of developing mindfulness, clear comprehension. That is also something we discuss in the Sati Sampajanya Sutta. And uh, and satime phala pachana, mindfulness my plowshare and gold. Now this is also very interesting. So Buddha keep mindfulness as the plowshare. So plowshare is a part which is doing that running in the front, moving in the front. So that is what the, uh, say preparing the, you can say the soil. For, uh, for plantation and actually that part is Buddha make it as a sati as a mindfulness so it is in the front so you are using maybe ox and all the different uh, instruments but in front is the plowshare plowshare is nothing but mindfulness so this is very interesting because sometimes we keep different things in the front Sometimes we keep mind, uh, sorry, we keep uh, concentration in the front. Sometimes we keep wisdom in the front. Maybe sadha in the front. Now these are different uh, ways that we may uh, enter to the practice. But here, interestingly, Buddha keep mindfulness in the front. Mind mindfulness prepares the soil as a plowshare. And Kaivutto uh, Vachigutto Ahare Uddare Yato Satchang Karomi Niddanam Sorachang Me Pamochanam. Now, Buddha further mentioned Kaya Guttu. That means he is further mentioning about this uh, uh, virtuous behavior. Through the body, he is not doing anything wrong. So, guarded the body. And similarly, he is guarding the speech still comes under the morality. Ahare Udare Yato, only maintaining or only having moderate food. So not overeating, but uh, controlled in food and belly. So basically he knows the amount, the moderation in the eat, eating. Satchang Karomi Niddana. And truth is using like the weeding. So sometimes we have to look at ourselves and uh, we are talking the truth. And he is here mentioning truth is like time to time he is weeding. Because when the paddy field is uh, maintained, so the farmer has to come and see whether weeds are there. So he is maintaining, he, he, he weeding the paddy field. So Buddha mentions, so I use truth for weeding. So in a way we can recognize if there is any kind of flaws in our practice so that has to be addressed, that has to be removed so that we become more uh, properly aimed in our practice. And Sorachang me pamochana. Now Soracha, Soracha means that we are ready to listen and we are easily tameable. Now sometimes as we are growing up the opposite happens. We don't want to listen to anyone. So we also become an adult. We also become a teacher. And uh, then we don't like another person come and telling something to us. Instructing us. Because we too have become instructors. We too have become uh, elders. We too have become teachers. But here Buddha emphasize Soracham me pamochana. So, 
by having a attitude of listening easy to listen easy to advise so that you are ready to change yourself and then sort of having fixations so if someone is pointing out our own fault our own misdeed our own uh, mistake then are we ready to accept it rather than defending it soracha so soracha is therefore very interesting quality but the highlights here so as a spiritual practitioner sometimes we don't care about much things so if someone else is telling something we don't care because we feel that uh, i am more spiritual i am more uh, say virtuous i am more wise so likewise we may even neglect someone else's words but if we are ready to listen to anyone and sim- simply to consider I mean, is it something worthy that he or she is mentioning is it really applicable is it really practical is it really available in me if it is a fault is it really available in me so likewise if we have an attitude of listening and that is even cultivated as mindful listening so we are not immediately rejecting when someone is telling something and also we are not immediately accepting and uh, sort of uh, being kind of a timid rather we are doing kind of an introspection after listening someone else's uh, say complaint so we are ready to consider it viryan me dhura dorai ha yoga kema di vahana now further information is coming and gachanti anivata anivattantam yatha gantva na sochati viryan me dhura dorai ha in a this my beast of burden carrying one toward security from bondage yoga kema di vahana now in order to now buddha actually here giving in a more kind of aesthetic manner so he is having a kind of a vehicle through which we are going towards a nibbana traveling towards nibbana so the vehicle is nib- actually the virya effort so effort is the vehicle using which one is now traveling towards nibbana yoga kema divahana so that yoga kema the nibbana is achieved reach through the virya as a vehicle gachanti anivat anivattanta yatha gantana sochati so once you reach there there is no sorrowing there is no worrying so and there is no turning back and once you reach there yatha gantana sochati so once you are there so kind of a fading away of worrying fading away of sorrows has to happen so this is something actually buddha highlights even uh, when he is preaching uh, satipatthana sutta where buddha mention ekayano ayam bikkave maggo sattanam suddhya soka paridhavanam samadiktamaya dukkha domana sthanam arthangamaya now that means even before one achieve the full nibbana we can say full fledged nibbana say ragakkhe dosakkhe mohakkhe if we, if we consider that as the completion of the practice actually buddha in a way promise when you start developing mindfulness atipattan practice it slowly fades away sorrow lamentation worrying despair and all sorts of such uh, dukkha has to fade away so that is something that we can verify actually we don't need to wait till we attain nibbana so removing or uh, eliminating one sorrows lamentations despair and satisfaction so all these are part of the practice so therefore when one starts mindfulness development so maybe at that time he is more sensitive or on the other hand may be having lot of uh, troubles worrying and some kind of stress 
all sorts of difficulties may be there. But later, with time, with practice, so we may, we may have to notice, if we do it properly, we may have to notice a fading away of this uh, despair, fading away of sorrow, fading away of lamentation. Eva mesa kasi katha sahoti amatak pala etan kasin kasitwana sabba dukha pamunchati Now Buddha mentioned in such a way this plowing is done which bears the deathless as its fruit. Having plowed with this kind of plowing one is released from all suffering. Now actually Buddha here metaphorically mentioned how his whole practice is somewhat equal to plowing, equal to farming. Because farming is quite simple, I mean familiar to the this particular person, Kasi Bharadwaja, because he is a well-known farmer, he's a practical farmer, and under him there are many farmers are also working. He's a head farmer, we can say. So he his terms are he, he is quite aware of the whole thing. So Buddha also talks in the same line. So rather than immediately telling about Four Noble Truths or Noble Eightfold Path in a more uh, say technical manner. So here Buddha aesthetically and with terms which uh, Asi Bharadwaja could easily understand through a simile. So he is addressing Kasi Bharadwaja. Now this is something that Buddha sometimes use so that the listener is capable of easily understand his Dhamma. So that is why Buddha's teaching is quite applicable to the many people because he talks you in the mundane terms. He talks you in the day-to-day -day terms. He uses the normal language where people can understand. And he comes to that level. He, he, he become a far, kind of a farmer and now he is explaining how he is farming. And each and every term that he has used, so then this Kasi Bharadwaja can reflect, as I mentioned as an example, why mindfulness is considered as a plowshare. And when plowshare is mentioned, so Kasi Bharadwaja know what is the purpose of that, what are the uh, kind of significance of that. And accordingly he may understand, okay, these are the qualities I need to balance, these are the qualities I need to develop and they have some similarity with respect to farming. And we also can recognize and why these different terms are used. So why Buddha tell faith as a seed and similarly why Buddha mention uh, the morality or various austerities as rain. Because sometimes we probably hear, okay, we may uh, need to strengthen our morality. So that is some somewhere like we are getting some rain. Okay, the crops are drying or we are not getting uh, enough uh, rain. So at that time, suppose that we are watering or we are getting some rain. So again, the crops start uh, properly growing. Because the necessary water, necessary moisture is available. So that's likewise, in our practice also, time to time such rain is necessary. Because we, we may continuing our practice, we may be developing mindfulness. But probably might forget to take care of the morality. So morality is like rain. A time to time give us that necessary moisture that necessary water so that we can absorb that again we are becoming more vital we are becoming more fresh and panyami yuga nangala now wisdom again Buddha explained and uh, hiri that is the moral shame so maintaining that sort of uh, actually moral shame is the pole now is giving very much like a kind of a direction, maintaining that. Satime Pala Pachanang, as we already discussed. So it is the Plausia. So that is the one leading. So it is very much like the leader. 
So it is uh, keeping in the front. As we maybe discussed in the previous time. So if we consider the uh, faculties, Sadha, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya. So Sati is very much like in the middle. And he is the one monitoring all others and telling us, okay, now you need to ex improve Sadha. Now you need to improve wisdom. Now you better improve, say, uh, effort. Now you better improve, uh, say, uh, concentration. Now you better reduce wisdom. Now you better reduce concentration. Now you better reduce effort. Now you better balance this. So likewise, this whole uh, monitoring, monitoring task is done by mindfulness. So that is why this uh, mindfulness in that sense playing that monitoring role. So the whole practice is very much like we are developing kind of a partner within ourselves. So we ourselves become our own teacher in that sense. At the beginning personally we may get some instruction from another teacher. We are starting our development practice. But later, so that practice itself become our teacher. So all those different faculties, particularly the mindfulness, will become our teacher. It is the one guarding us. It is the one leading us. It is the one monitoring us and informing us, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that. You have this, you are, you are, you are doing this mistake, you are doing that mistake. Now you are good, now you have corrected that. So likewise, this whole monitoring process is achieved by mindfulness. And uh, ultimately, Buddha mentioned, so like this, when I am doing this plowing and sowing, ultimately I am having the Amata Phala as the Nibbana, as the, as the fruit. That less as the fruit. So all these things are properly managed. So he is going through the uh, plowing process. And ultimately, he is getting the fruit, harvest. That is the deathless the deathless state of the mind. So he's explaining or he's experiencing that deathless state. Etan kasin kasitvana sabba dukha pamunchati. Now with this, I'm continuing this plowing process. Ultimately, I am completely rid of all the different kinds of suffering. Now, so in a way, we can consider this as a kind of a dialogue between uh, uh, typical worldly aspects and using the same terminology with the, with the explaining the spiritual aspects kind of a combination of both sides so he is using the same terminology used in plowing used in uh, say in today's terms say kind of business and Buddha is explaining his Dhamma using the same terminology so that is something interesting that Buddha highlighted and certain monks actually tried uh, to preach Dhamma only using, uh, say, Sanskrit, even during Buddha's time. So they want to somewhat make it more academic. But Buddha refused it. Buddha mentioned, no, no, you can explain Dhamma using any language. Language is not the problem. You don't need to be, it, not, it, not, it need not to be extremely academic. You can use whatever the language that people are using, using which you need to pass the message using which you are convincing what needs to be done. You are explaining the Dhamma using whatever the techniques. So therefore Buddha use similes, metaphors and uh, say common language which people may understand and through that Buddha is able to pass the message. Buddha was able to uh, explain Dhamma so that another person would understand. And we have some more things to discuss in this Kasibara Dvaja Sutta, the second part. And we may discuss that uh, in the next time. And with that, I like to conclude today's uh, Dhamma sermon. Now I like to open the session for questions. Oh, sir, I Yeah. Uh, today we have only one question so far. Okay. Uh, dear Bante, I practice meditation for about two years, and from recent months. I practice daily in the morning or evening. I can feel improvement of my life when compared with my previous behavior. 
last few days i was at home by myself and very happily started a day but when, when it comes to afternoon i felt really upset without having any issues i was thinking about my happy past of childhood memories with my parents and siblings i could be able to manage my sad mood after applying theories i learned from dhamma sermons what i realized was even though i thought i have improved seems to be not much sorry can you repeat the last statement uh, what i realized was even though i thought i have improved seems to be not much okay <laughs> could you please kindly advise me how to improve my situation thanks for your guidance tervan sarana yeah actually time to time this <coughs> this kind of ups and downs may happen so but you have properly uh, overcome that so you are able to use dhamma what you have learned uh, so that you are able to overcome this situation so this this these things are possible these things are available so it is not that we are going to straight line or in a 45 degree angle so every every time so these ups and downs are available and again in the life itself would the mention is kind of going through all these vicissitudes either with the happiness or the kind of unhappiness or the gain or the fame or oh, sorry the gain or the loss or sometimes the fame or the ill fame so these kinds of eight type of vicissitudes that buddha uh, mentioned so these are quite common to everyone and in your situation actually maybe kind of a inner way of thinking sometimes we think differently or in wrong terms so that itself can take us to kind of uh, worrying or regrets or even some depressive thoughts but if you are recognizing that without going to the obsessive level before that if you are able to understand that so then we can apply breaks so the actually the development of mindfulness is actually necessary for this reason because uh, so it help us to have this monitoring process so we know what is thinking this fellow assume that uh, mind is somewhat uh, kind of an instrument so it is sometimes associating all these unnecessary things various kind of thoughts so if we are aware what kind of thoughts going on and we can be kind of uh, cautious about it because uh, you surely mind like to think about like that because mind like to worry mind like to have a uh, kind of uh, say thinking about the future and little worried uh, anxious uh, maybe thinking about the past and regretting about what has happened so even though we know these are useless and even harmful still mind is engage with this kind of thinking so mindfulness help us in this sense because then through mindfulness we understand okay these are not really necessary and we we have kind of a protection because we can stop that and here you are using kind of a, a counter acting uh, thoughts maybe using the dhamma so you are using different ways and mechanisms to overcome that and uh, so likewise we need to little uh, safeguard ourselves sometimes even in certain verses certain dhamma stories and certain monks also mention it is like very much like a say a particular elephant has drowned in a in a in a pit sometimes it is difficult because it's a elephant it's not a say normal cat or maybe monkey or someone so the elephant itself has to come out of the wherever it has fallen maybe a pit maybe a whatever it is now it's with, with lot of effort that he is coming out so one day a monk has seen that how an elephant has is coming out from a fallen pit so with lot of effort now he take it as an example for his own uh, kind of effort kind of a practice now he also himself apply lot of effort because it is not easy 
because various other reasons are there time to time things are happening and uh, maybe we go through various physical difficulties maybe illnesses and things are not favorable sometimes and when these things are happen i mean if we are able to maintain kind of a balanced mind or at least we are able to quickly recover so that is very important so that is what uh, sometimes in the mindfulness terminology one is mentioning as resilience say you are sometimes due to various reasons you collapse you you feel uh, defeated or you start worrying but you can quickly recover so that recovery is quite speedy when one is developing mindfulness yeah so we have received uh, i don't know any other questions are there yes we have another six questions yeah so this one yeah we uh, the dear, uh, dear venerable bante when we see things and hear then things ultimately ultimately become a thing in the mind like an object in the mind i was listening to the most venerable katkurunde swami in vahansa deshana and he explained the reason for it you it using king moolaka sutra in that he said chand moolaka sabbe dhamma manasikar sambhavo sabbe dhamma meaning that be, meaning that because of the choice all dharmata occurs and because of rethinking on and on it gets established after i heard this it was a huge eye opener when i wanted to share with others perhaps pante you can do a session on king moolaka sutra in katakurunde swami vahanse explanations in one of our next mya full day retreat i feel it would be an eye opener for others as well much merits and with metta yeah very good suggestion actually uh, actually i conducted a retreat using kimmulaka sutta at nisarnavane uh, as you said it's a very interesting sutta <clears throat> and uh, same thing was published in the book also and katakurunde bante actually explained that very beautifully and how different uh, these uh, factors are very much like governing the whole process and uh, buddha gave that as an explanation whenever someone is asking these questions particularly say where is other ascetics are there so they get on to various argue so buddha is very much like teaching the other monks okay monks if they ask like this you better answer like this so when they are asking uh, what is the root cause for everything then you better ask you better answer that chanda mulaka sabbe dhamma for chanda the desire is the root cause of uh, everything so likewise with the talks about i think eight questions and answers and maybe we will take that uh, in the future as the theme of the mya session then we also can discuss that yes thank you for the suggestion that questions out of 6 uh, dear bante i heard the word abhinya jnana what does it mean by that thank you and with metta now abhinya typically i mean abhinyayam typically means direct knowledge so it is not some inferential knowledge it is not something that you gain through the book but through your direct knowledge experiential knowledge we can say so on the other hand abhinya is another terminology where uh, one may acquire the various other uh, say uh, psychological type of uh, skills reading someone else's mind maybe uh, seeing something uh, far away which others can't see hearing something very far away which others can't hear so these are and again reflecting past lives so these are sometimes called as abhinya so that is a different subject but typically abhinya abhinyayam means that uh, you are 
through your direct knowledge that you are experiencing, through your direct knowledge that you have understood. So that is the terminology. Fourth question out of seven. Dear Bhante, this is a reflection of my mindful walking practice last week. I started focus on the lower body, keeping the hands and upper body still in a relaxed position while walking. I tried to pay attention to the sole of the foot and most of the time can observe the pressure on the sole and how it gets disturbed across the sole and to the toes. I can differentiate the above walking process as left and right foot sensations continuously for two to three rounds. My walking path is about 25 steps tile floor, a corridor inside a house. Sometimes the mind drifts away and many thoughts appear. I can come back to the walking process with some effort. While the thoughts are crowded, I can observe lifting of one leg at a time and when it comes down and hits the floor, I do it by extra forces so the mind gets shifted to the walking rather than staying with the thoughts. By, by artificially generating these gross level sensations, I can come back to the walking process. However, I am mindful thought I am mindful throughout that uh, deliberate act as well. Once settled, I can observe the subtle, deta subtle details on the soul. Don't know if this is a, this is the right technique, but works for me at the moment and throughout of checking with Pante. Thank yeah, you I mean, for your venerable yeah. service with Vetta. Yeah, actually, uh, different techniques you can use as tools, but later, I mean, uh, seasoning yourself more into the natural way is much better. Now, at the beginning, we may tell left, right, left, right, uh, say lifting, moving, placing, and as you are doing kind of purposely, deliberately doing some uh, hitting the floor, whatever it is, you can use. But later when mindfulness develops, when fair amount of concentration develops and when mind become with uh, less distractions, then uh, actually you don't need to apply unnecessary effort and you may feel it as a burden. So that, that information has to come from you. So your, your, your practice will tell you, okay, at a given moment, okay, now it is not necessary to do this artificially, do this uh, deliberately. Rather, I better uh, adjust to the normal pace, adjust to the normal way of walking. Let things happen, uh, say, more naturally, without any kind of disturbance. So then only actually we can say the proper balance has happened. So, so far, I mean, right now, effort is leading. doesn't matter because you, are, you want to reduce distractions, you want to pay close attention, you are using more effort. But later, definitely you have to reduce effort. That means you have to stop all these other deliberate activities, simply allow the process to happen more and more natural. And then the smooth kind of uh, faculties would be available. Effort is available, but only the, to the optimum level. Then uh, you are able to focus your attention carefully. And there are no disturbance to the mind. And uh, again, you are able to observe what is really going on with the distant. So likewise, as your practice growing, you may recognize, okay, these uh, techniques have to be adjusted. Otherwise, if you are keeping them forever, then you can't even uh, succeed. That uh, excess effort itself will agitate the mind. Yeah. Fifth question out of seven. Dear Bhante, much merits for the Dhamma talks and explanations from Uraga Sutta which gave us a lot of details and insights about the fetters, uh, latent, tendency, latent tendencies and defilements in the mind. With your guidance, now we have a chance to identify some of these states in the mind. Is it possible to establish mindfulness while we are overwhelmed by these unwholesome status? Or should we wait till they subside 
and the mind is cleared to establish mindfulness with metta. Is it, uh, what's the question asking? I didn't get it properly. Yeah, is it possible to, shall I send from the beginning? No, no, no. That's the last question, question yeah. part. Is it possible to establish mindfulness while we can overwhelm by these unwholesome status? Or mm-hmm. should we wait till they subside and the mind is clear to establish mindfulness? No, no, actually, uh, I mean, establishing mindfulness is possible even when the, say, the mind has overwhelmed by or uh, going through some defilement. It is very much like you are now applying brakes. Now, that is why mindfulness is considered as a kind of a dam. Yeah, the flowing is there, kind of the flowing of various defilements are there, but the very moment you become mindful, so you apply brakes. Now, now it's no more flowing there, but still you are aware now, still burning is there, now still the defilements are there, but you are not driven by them. You are not getting to the kind of the transgression level, but you know very well now mind is defiled, but aware, aware of that. But very, I mean, that, that uh, process itself will slowly help you to disengage from the defilements. Now, typically what happens is, suppose that you get angry. So you don't know that anger is growing. Now you get angry and you are now supporting and uh, you think that you are correct. The other person is wrong and you remember what he or she has done. Now you become more and more angry. Now you want to even blame or hit or whatever it is. Now that is where we are kind of unmindful of what is going on. Now suppose when anger has grown to some extent, at that very moment you sort of establish mindfulness. So at that moment, so you start seeing anger as anger. It is not that you are angry with the particular person and he is wrong, you are correct and he did this, he did that. You are not in that story part, rather you establish mindfulness, you introspect and you see, okay, anger is available. You are able to recognize anger objectively. And that is the moment that you establish mindfulness. And later, as a result of that, now you disengage. Rather than being driven by that or being a slave to that, now you are disengaged from anger. As a result of that, you are not feeding it. You are not strengthening it. Now it starts to fade away. Therefore, establishing mindfulness is extremely necessary when the defilements have come to some level and uh, at that moment from that point onward they may start to fade away but later as your mind become more and more mindful then you don't need to wait i mean you uh, you may your mindfulness will tell you indicate to you even when the slightest defilement is arising in the mind yeah uh, sixth sixth question out of seven uh, dear venerable sir when i am wo- I am on walking practice most of the days. I get good ideas about my office work or how to sort things which are pending. Since they are good ideas, it is very hard to stop and concentrate on practice. You can, you gave an advice last time to write down these thoughts which I have started doing. I kept a small notebook at the side of my walking path to write them down if some good ideas creeps into my mind. This way, I can now forget about these thoughts and focus on walk afterwards since I know they will not be lost. Much merits for your practical advice. Yeah, good, good. So I also sometimes keep a little piece of paper in close to my table because while walking these ideas are coming actually very good ideas. I mean, uh, as you said, because actually for our own problems, sometimes whenever, whenever we are thinking too much, those ideas are not coming. Proper, proper solutions are not coming because mind is crowded. But with practice, especially while walking, so mind become more and more cleansed, more clarity is available in the mind. So all of a sudden, immediately that whatever the uh, solution is immediately popping up. So simply we can write it down and then forget it. Actually, the practice is more important as a 
as a side effect, side results of this has happened. But we need to continue the practice giving more emphasis to that. Rather than involved with this uh, result and continuing with the solution, we better leave it aside. And now we need to continue our practice giving more value to that. And my, for that mind has to be more sort of uh, uh, independent, not thinking anything else, rather more focused, simplified, lighter with the practice. So this, sometimes we have the wrong uh, kind of attitude thinking that through thinking we can get result. But you may probably understand. So while you're walking, your thinking process fairly stopped. Even though the thinking process stopped, so immediately you get a solution. So that means we have a different dimension in our mind, not only through thinking that you can produce proper results, but this uh, very silent deep listening or very silent awareness is a deep resource of uh, wisdom. So through that actually we may get proper results. Yeah. Interesting for sharing. Uh, this is the last question. This is a general question. Uh, Dhamma, Dhamma question equals dearable, uh, dear venerable Bhante. This question is regarding Sanya. In the lines of Dhamma, Sanya, Loke, Pierupan, Satarupan. Satarupan, Satarupan, yeah. Satarupan, Ettesa, Tamha, Tanha, Pahiya, Mana, Pahiyati, Etta, Niruja, Mana, Nirujati. In this line, does it refer to the old sanya that was perceived before a brand new sanya? So actually, it I need to refer that verse. So I can't remember. I think in the in the in the Sutta Nipata, this uh, verse is coming. If you have the uh, verse written, uh, can you put it to the chat box so that I can actually. Uh, look at that or if you can whoever asking the question if you can point out the sutta name then it is easy to understand easy to uh, refer it a little bit because I can't exactly uh, I didn't properly get the terms can you copy it to the chat box hey, my Swami, no, so I will do that Pierupangs, Atharupang, I can't remember if the, I have this, I have dumb question, dear Vati, Sanya, Pahiyati, Etta Nirujjamana Nirujjati. Actually, here I think uh, this is referring the Satipatthana in the in the uh, here they are also I think it is mentioned. So so Pierupang uh, Satarupang that means uh, certain rupa different kinds of forms that we like and we can which produce uh, ha happy pleasurable uh, feelings and uh, they are actually the various sanya is happening and that they are itself we better remove it so then and there I mean it is not that uh, something happened in the past and we are going there and removing it or which is not happened yet we are going we can remove it but at this very moment in the present moment we are doing the practice so then and there when when that is available so we have to be aware and then remove it that is what i feel i am getting through this uh, statement 
but I will check that uh, because uh, uh, if if I can really find out the place, then it is easy for me to recognize the uh, meaning with respect to the context. But uh, this alone, I can't give a firm answer. But maybe I'll try. I mean, if you can. Remember where you have extracted this verse, that would be easy. Uh, then I can find it out. Then maybe later, next time, we'll find a proper answer. That is the last question, Varte. Uh, okay. Yes. And uh, we come to the end of the program. And I would first like to thank Bante for his valuable time. Also, we would like to pass our merits to everyone, both seen and unseen, who are enabling this program. And we pass our merits to uh, all participants for joining the program. With that, I would like to conclude the program today. Teruan Saranai, Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. Yeah, Teruan Saranai.